Okay. Uh, are you able to see the screen? Yes, Lexa. sir. Okay. Yeah. Lecture four. This chapter is talk about hydrostatic force. So so far, what we uh, learn, we learn. Uh, we start from fluid property, right? Then some law. Then we measure the pressure inside a fluid at a certain depth. Then just previous lecture, we learn about how you can measure the pressure, either using a manometer or either using a mechanical device, right? But uh, we have a very uh, good tool, tool mean equation uh, to measure the pressure at a certain depth of fluid. That pressure is is uh, rho g equal to p, right? Or we can say p equal to gamma h. This is very good tool. Say if a uh, dolphin swimming under the sea at a certain depth okay say depth is 500 meter you can easily figure out how much will be pressure on his body just top surface right uh, and you can just sitting your decks and calculate the pressure so pressure p equal to h rho g you figure out similarly pressure from the all side will be same for static fluid right from this side from this side uh, will be same now if i say instead of uh, or if i say the top projected area of the top surface of body of the dolphin is point uh, zero eight meters square then how much he will experience the force at the top surface or if i call that is a submarine at that depth and just think this is the top surface is roof kind of horizontal or flat if i give you area you can figure out the force right uh, you figure out the pressure from the depth then force equal to pressure into area right so you see a submarine at depth he will feel pressure from this side from this side from all around the pressure will be same magnitude right so a submarine kind of a tube so if pressure is too much and body is not strong then it will quiz and ultimately break down and remain under water and similarly in case of dolphin you see a lot of pressure but uh, still his muscle uh, will carry all the pressure okay so my intention is to explain the important of the equation p equal to h rho g other thing that fluid pressure is very important things uh, if you are not calculate fluid pressure properly you cannot design some structure uh, which will be submerged in the water 
or floating in the water. For example, you cannot design a, a dam. Say you have a dam and this side has a water. So if you design that maximum water level in the front side will be this mass height. Then you see, if I look from this side, then right over here, depth is zero. You gradually coming down, your depth gradually increasing. And right over here, pressure will be high because the vertical depth is high, right? So if you design a uh, dam like that, or canal, uh, <coughs> on the canal or river, then in the bottom has to be more wider because it will experience more pressure. This is one thing. Other thing, uh, normally you'll see those dam, uh, they have a, they keep some opening because if any region in the front side, water is height is increasing then it might be overflow or the dam might be damaged. So what the, we have an option, then you can cut the dam a little bit at certain uh, location. For example, after one mile or three miles. And right over here, you can put a vertical plate and we attach some screw that is called switch gate. You can take it, you rotate the screw, it will open from the bottom. Okay, and water will pass under the plate. But it say your plate is close. Plate is close, then this plate, this is top, this is the bottom. So if water level, this level come right over here, right over here, your pressure, water pressure will be zero. Gradually going down, water pressure will be high. Now, how will figure out the uh, total pressure force due to the pressure, how much will be the force? Because you see, you cannot take this reading because pressure is zero. Coming down, pressure gradually increase. So whose value you will take? So if you know the pressure, then your force will be uh, area into pressure. Right? And you see pressure at top surface zero. So this plate, if I look from this side, then you see if this mass is thickness, then uh, pressure on the plate right here is a high, gradually moving upward, pressure will be decrease, and finally, say right over here is zero. Now, then, Obviously, you cannot uh, take the bottom one or you cannot take the upper one. One option you have, you can take average, right? The so whose average you will take, top and bottom. How we can measure the bottom, but if you know the height, you can measure, right? But if you take multiple points, then your average Say you take 100 point, 1000 of point. Between this point to this point, then take average, then it might little bit close to the accurate result. But this is not the process. You have to mathematically prove that uh, you can figure out a equation or formula to figure out the pressure, okay? So you see, 
the resultant of all the forces or pressure should work through a certain point through this point right so if you able to figure out a formula to figure out this force or pressure working through this point and if i know the location from the top that at what height or depth the total pressure force is working then you can design the gate properly because you have to make sure that what will be thickness of this plate what type of material you use other thing in the both side and also you have to make a support to strong enough that yeah, that support will carry the load because uh, pressure force ultimately work from right over here in the plate right so this plate if you think other way that this is a cantilever beam this pressure working right uh, let me take the arrow right over here you have support at the both side so this is the support then you can figure out if you know this force if you know this force location from the then from the geometry and from the location of this pressure then you can figure out these two reaction force this one and this one then you can design the switch gate similarly uh, you are working in a shipyard and design a bigger ship that will carry the cargo load from the over sea so in that case your say with load this mass will be submerged in the water then how much will be force in the side of the ship due to the water pressure if you not calculate the if you design is wrong then due to the water pressure this side might be breakdown okay uh, some time wave coming with higher speed and hitting the side of the ship then it will break down okay so there is a huge application of uh, figure out the pressure force of fluid in a uh, parts or structure so that's why the name of this chapter hydrostatic force okay so we i just trying to give you a intro about the important of this chapter so let's go through this chapter so it's saying you need to know certain term number one thing total pressure or total pressure force and center of pressure a body remain under water it, it will have two things say this is our swiss gate plate number one thing that it will have all the pressure say from the right side is working right in the bottom pressure will be higher and in the top pressure will be low so resultant pressure will work through a point for example right over here and also there is a cg of the structure center of gravity so this might be at the center of the plate right two thing is there so at first we need to know what is total pressure it's saying when a static 
obviously we are working with the static fluid like static mass of fluid comes contact with the surface either plane or car a force exerted by the fluid on the surface either plane or car okay this force force exerted on the surface this force is called total pressure actually i would say better to call it total pressure force uh, but in sometimes some book they mention as a total pressure you uh, taking shower in a from a bucket of water and you fill up the bucket with water how the pressure force work at the bottom of the bucket and other thing pressure always work perpendicular to the surface so they have inclined surface your pressure working like that gradually it will decrease you will move from the bottom to top you coming down then pressure increase and at the bottom of the uh, bucket pressure will be uniform right now if you like to carry this bucket with full of say this much water you like to carry the bucket by your hand then what we'll see if your bucket material is uh, is thin or weak then bottom will be deflected like that that means there is a force working so for example you buy a new bucket is okay but bucket material is extremely thin sometimes uh, say made of a plastic uh, polythene sheet then you will see this side will be deep also deflect if wall is strong enough the pressure force working on the bucket from this direction it will resist by the strength of the wall okay so remember that when a structure or when a fluid comes contact to a structure then it will apply some pressure or force perpendicular to the surface always and this force is known as, known as total pressure and it's saying that it is always work in that direction normal to the surface and point of application of total pressure on the surface is known as center of pressure uh, so all the resultant force where is working through a point that point is called center of pressure uh, right over here you see a car surface come contact a fluid or fluid come to a contact to a car surface so what will be happen all the fluid pressure in every point is working it will be perpendicular to the surface and gradually you are moving upward your pressure will decrease from the surface at the top surface it will be zero so if this result in now how it will be balanced by the strength of the wall so your reaction force will work along this direction that when wall will resist right all the force now resultant of this force uh, might work through a point say this point now location of this point is called center of pressure it is needed to find the magnitude of total pressure and location of pressure center 
to design hydraulic structure. Hydraulic structure means those structures submerged under fluid or floating on the fluid. So right over here, what it is showing that resultant force is working uh, through a point, through this point, and you can put a reaction right over here. Uh, for example, you submerge a sphere in the water, then all the pressure will work perpendicular to the surface. So all the point, that means it will work, direction will be toward the center of the sphere, okay? And if uh, this one is the water line, obviously right over pressure will be low, this will be high. And gradually moving upward, it will, pressure will decrease, depends on the size of the ball, okay? Now, right over here, I'm just showing a picture and you see in the picture is showing a inclined surface and this inclined surface uh, this area is different and this is the hash and right in the black one is a plate remind inclined in a, a dam surface for example, if I draw, say this is a dam going like that, okay. So just I described before that you can uh, cut a portion of the dam, put a sluice gate for controlling the water flow. In that case, it would be vertical right along this location but if you keep opening through a portion and you can put a inclined uh, plate over here right you can put a plate and you can move this plate downward or upward to control the water flow so you see this plate is not completely uh, horizontal, it's angle, a certain angle. If I make a line like that, that means making certain angle with the horizontal line, right? So this one is showing over here. So in that case, our plate is right, only this mass, this mass is the plate. So if you have a, some mechanism, you can uh, slide the plate upward, then gate will be open. It's pushed down, gate will be closed. But when water level will be this mass, then you need to figure out how much will be force in the plate. Where is the resultant force working? then you start to design what will be the thickness and what will be the material, okay? So this is the inclined surface of the dam that I sh show you before. And this is, is the plate. And this plate, this must is inclined length along the dam surface. And this arbitrary shape is A, B. This is A, this is B. So obviously it has a area of this uh, plate. It has a location of CG that is showing over here. And also it has a pressure center. That means resultant pressure is working through a Point and it experiencing force and pressure. If we know the pressure, we can figure out the force.
course. So you see, this is the top surface, free surface, and right, this is the bottom of the plate. Along inclined distance, we uh, make with uh, denoted by y axis, y. And the vertical depth, we mention with h. So how we can figure out the total pressure? And this is the theta. Now, over here, we have two axes. One is x axis, other one is y axis. So I need to show you that which one is the x axis, which one is the y axis. So this is my uh, dam. So say this point is over here, this point. So if you move downward the inclined surface, that means you are moving along y direction. And you move along the length of the dam, then this is x axis. So in our case, x axis is going to the screen, to the monitor, okay? Now, how I can figure out the uh, pressure force? Number one thing, this one we can apply uh, sine theta, cos theta to convert the inclined distance into vertical distance. So in this plate, I am taking a very small uh, segment of the plate. At this segment, the vertical inclined height is dy. Is I'm taking this area, small area. I'm saying this area is dA. <coughs> An inclined surface from the top surface, inclined distance is y. So this is the y. So vertical depth tool is h. And there is a relationship because uh, this angle theta, right? So if I make a triangle, this is my inclined distance y. And vertical distance is h. This is theta then we will get this done. That sine theta equal to h by y. Now, this plate has a center of gravity, say right over here. And center of gravity will be at a inclined distance is y bar, particle distance h bar. So this plate have a pressure. In the bottom, it will be pressure more. You moving upward, pressure will be low. So all the resultant pressure work through a point. We thinking this is this one right over here. CP, location of CP. Now, uh, I put CP or they use CP, put bottom of CG, but it could be like that, that CG at the bottom, say right over here, and CP at the top, right? You might have a question why you are not uh, keep uh, considering like that. But actually, the center of pressure is always work uh, bottom of center of gravity. And we can prove mathematically, okay? So right over here, this one we are thinking, this one, center of pressure. And we indicating distance yp. And vertical distance, we don't uh, mention it, we don't need it. But still, you can figure out. Vertical distance will be, you can say, sp. Okay? Okay, now, 
so this small strip is dy vertical height is s you see if i make vertical height then the right bottom we are saying s what will be height over here less than s but the we are concerning the area extremely narrow dy small segment so we are not considering that difference okay so how much will be fluid pressure right over in that small segment fluid pressure we can figure out right p equal to rho g s right or we can say gamma s now s we can put in terms of sin theta right if i in terms of distance y then it will be gamma is a is value right over here gamma y sin theta okay gamma y sin theta this mass pressure will work in that right over here so pressure working in the small area how much force how much force equal to pressure into area so if i consider very small area so force working in that area will be very small so i can say force is df so df equal to p into small area or small area da now that p if we put it over here we are getting gamma y sin theta sin theta da right now how we can figure out the total force just integrate both side and integration will be over area now you see the area of this small segment we are calling da this da will depend on y because if y is decrease then this thickness will increase so dy will be i'm saying uh, my y is from here to here then dy will be this much if y value is increase di will be very small that mean if i integrate both side in the left hand side i'll get f right hand side gamma sin theta i'm taking out front of integration then integrate y da of area integration from if i express y da by something then i can get the amount of force okay so let's see in the next slide we figure out the force that how we did it just a look you see the pressure right over here is p so p equal to gamma s right for gamma s then this s we express in terms of inclined distance gamma y sin theta now area of the mall strip is da if we multiply by p we are getting force but that force for only in the small area so we express it by df now this p we put this value so gamma y sin theta da now you do the integration on the both side so f equal to area of df and df equal to this mass so we put this mass over here 
and gamma sine theta you take front of the integration <coughs> now we need to figure out mathematically we need again we need to apply the knowledge from your engineering mechanic mechanics that what is the this value can i express this value by something else so i can have a formula if i say this value is equal to this value is equal to alpha then your force what is coming force equal to gamma sine theta into say some constant alpha you have the formula <coughs> now we need to understand what is the integration portion uh, yda what does it meaning of yda right uh, this uh, portion this one this one actually you see integration on area so this one i can express with this term i can say uh, y into area a1 plus y2 into area a2 plus y3 into area a3 integration mean summation then what about the segment that we can write down right so when you use this type of formula in engineering mechanics in engineering mechanics you figure out the calculate the cg of the of a uh, body multi-body or single body uh, and you use this kind of formula you remember that uh, say x c g equal to sum of area ai sum of x i i equal to uh, 1 to n in the bottom sum of area sum of area mean area of the whole object right over here total area then you take the summation do you remember when did you figure out this one say for example you have a uh, body a rectangular body then you have a triangular now you have a hole right over here and right over here your horizontal and vertical axis how will you figure out the location of CG of the structure? Say it might be right over here. How will you figure out by this formula? Okay. So this formula, I can, in the top part, I can write down the integration of A into X DA. integration of x da so similarly uh, y da we know that if you figure out a y cg of a structure or area that equal to at the bottom total area of the plate that i was showing a plate with it has some portion triangular and then rectangular then also it has a hole 
So in that cases, you have to figure out total summation. How summation? You can figure out area of the triangular portion, say A1. Then you need to figure out vertical height of the CG of the triangular portion, say Y1. Plus, you figure out the area of the rectangular portion, YCG of the rectangular portion. Now, there is a hole. The hole, you know the radius, you can figure out the area. So, minus area will be Y3 and Y distance. I can write down this way. We can figure out this way. And this area A equal to A1 plus A2 minus A3. If this is no hole, let's say we have a triangular, then and also it have a like that, then this will be plus. And this area will be sum of this area, this one, this one. Okay. So now this one I can express other way that y bar instead of summation i can say by integration uh, y into da divided by area so that i put right over here now this y da we can figure out the y da equal to y bar into area so they put it over here O gamma sine theta into a y bar. So a very simple thing. So now you see this is our total pressure force. Now we I can express in terms of vertical height. Then it is coming y into y bar into sine theta equal to h bar. So formula f equal to gamma h bar a. So this equation state that total pressure force on any submerged plane surface is equal to the area and pressure working through the centroid of the body. You have to figure out how much pressure working at the center. Easily you can, if you figure out the location of the center, H bar, then you just use this formula. If you know the theta, if you know the y bar, you can figure out h bar. Okay. And what is the a area of the plate? If it's rectangular or circular or triangular, you can figure out the area. Now, uh, what is left the other thing? Other thing we need to figure out uh, what will be the location of center of pressure. So let's see how we can figure out. Uh, so far, any question, anyone? Hello? Sir. No question? No, sir. Okay. Uh, now, what we'll do, we'll figure out the location of center of pressure. So, what do we thinking that pressure in the right over here force will be high? Our pressure force over here low gradually is moving uh, inclined distance or vertical height, your force will be decrease. So, resultant force must work through a point, right? So we are thinking that resultant force is working through this point. And this resultant force is F. Now, <clears throat> it's not the force resultant pressure. Uh, we call center of pressure. How we can figure out their distance? So I can think this is my resultant force from the resultant pressure. Uh, we already 
figure out the force, right? But we need to figure out the it location, and location of resultant pressure force. So this point we consider the distance from the inclined surface is yp. Now, how we can uh, figure out? You see, this is a static body. The body is not moving. If I take moment along x-axis right over here, then what will be uh, the moment? Moment due to the f, and moment due to the all the pressure force showing with the red color has to be equal. If not equal, then uh, the body will be rotated. You see, this resultant force actually is coming from the fluid. But as an engineer, how, how we will protect it? That means you have to consider that uh, this will be my reaction force from the suppet. If this is reaction force, then some support in the support, your force will be along this direction, along this direction, right? But that means this force, you can think the some force going with the top support and also bottom surface. Now, if this body is not rotating, then moment due to the force F and moment due to the all the force working in the small area has to be equal. Now, how we'll figure out the force, a moment, force into distance, right? So force working in the small area, how much? We figure out all the previous DF, force working in the small area. Is df right that df we already figure out i'm taking moment right over here for df that is working in the small segment so what will be my uh, moment force into distance what is the distance y so i can say y into df and y into df this is working on a very small area moment this segment but i like to figure out the whole similarly if you take right over here on segment the he is experiencing some force gradually all over the place right so if i take the summation of the force that means integration that will be the total moment total moment if you consider the small segment. Now, what will be the, um, if the resultant force is working through this point, what will be the moment? Resultant force is F. Again, force into distance. So this moment will be F into what is the distance yp and this two it has to be equal so we are getting f into yp y df okay this one uh, right over here it's saying distributed force can be replaced by a single resultant force working at the pressure center without altering any reaction or moment in the system. So that's why uh, we figure out that total moment will be F uh, DF into Y, right? And instead of that moment, I mean, thinking a resultant force is working F, what will be that moment? F into YP. And that's saying these two has to be equal. Now, from here, we are getting FYP, 
target to figure out the yp so yp equal to ydf by f you see this one now the value of f we already figure out from the previous slide that f is this mass and value of df also we figure out df is this mass now we figure out the y into df divided by f that value we figure out so if this one you put in the bottom this one you put in the top side so top side y into df right so you see sin theta this sin theta will be out then this gamma this gamma will be out in the bottom you will have a y bar in the bottom a y bar in the top there is a y right over here and one more y right over here so you get y square integration of da so you getting this one y square da now you think what is y square da from your engineering mechanics y square into area integration what is this value anyone this is moment of inertia what is moment of inertia by definition moment of inertia mean moment of area but you have to take twice it's called double moment of area how uh, say you have a y axis you have a x axis just thinking you have a small area is da and he has a cg right this point so this location of cg vertical distance is y and horizontal distance is x now you take moment of this area i will take the moment force into distance equal to moment right now we have to take area into distance so distance y into area this you are getting the moment of area i am saying uh, dm dm right i am putting area for on time but moment of inertia is equal to double moment of area that mean you get one time moment now take it again that mean again you need to multiply by distance y so this you are getting for small area da so moment total moment of area along x axis you are ultimately getting y square da in area integration if you have a bigger area arbitrary area this m moment of area double moment of area is called moment of inertia that means this equal to ultimately you are getting y bar moment of inertia along y axis okay i'm sorry along x axis because x axis distance is y if you take this distance x then it will be uh, y okay so i x uh, did you remember this equation anyone in engineering mechanics you you look your class note that i x x equal to y square d a integration and i y y equal to x square 
DF. Okay. So this one, this value we know equal to IX. So you just put over here. So IX equal to A into Y bar. Right? Now this IX respect to what? CZ right over here. We are taking respect to X axis right over here. But your body is right over here. Now, how you can say, for example, you have X axis, you have a body right over here. This is Y, this is X. If this is height is A, and width is B, then what will be inertia along X axis? If CZ is right over here, then it has also axis that right? this is a vertical axis, this horizontal axis. So what will be value of I CZ? I CZ mean you taking inertia this point, this CZ, not the axis. So I'm saying I bar X equal to how much? One by 12 B A cube, right? Similarly, I Y will be how much? One by 12 A is B cube, right? Anyone has any confusion right over here? Um, these two inertia, you are getting respect to the CZ of the structure. So you have rectangular right over here, respect to this point, you are getting inertia. This is location of your CD an area of this plate is A. This vertical distance is D. And inertia along X axis, I am saying I bar X. What will be inertia actually through this X axis? Anyone? Which formula? will apply uh, parallel axis theorem you remember in the engineering mechanics that inertia of a object from the x axis equal to inertia of same object along x axis respect to the cg of the body plus area into d square, a d square. This is called parallel axis theorem. So this ICG, I can express with I naught. I'm saying I naught plus area into d square. So what is our D? right over here is Y bar, right? Right over here. D is the distance from CZ to the axis. So our X axis is right over here, going perpendicular to the screen. What is the distance of CZ? Y bar. So A Y bar whole square. Now, so IX equal to this mass. This IX, we'll put it over here. So if I X, you put it over here, then the bottom we have A Y. So I not by this value. Right over here, A will be out only Y bar. So this is the location of center of pressure. So from the equation, which one is bigger? YP or y, y bar? Anyone? This is my YP. 
and this is my y bar. What is the y bar? Location of the CG and YP location of pressure center. So in right, you look in this area in the right side and tell me which one is bigger from the equation we can mention. From the equation you see uh, inertia cannot be zero. Area cannot be zero. Location of distance of CG cannot be zero. So this term have some value. If this is zero, then what will getting? You are getting YP equal to Y bar. But this is cannot be zero. This is positive value. So always you see uh, YP is greater than y bar okay so that's what I'm saying where i naught is the moment of inertia of the plane with respect to its own centroid a is the area of the plane surface and y is the distance between the centroid and x-axis that means this is y bar Okay. Any question from anyone? Any question? Okay. So we have two formula, you see. Number one formula you need to know that amount of force working in the body that equation is this one and if you have angle value of angle then you can uh, if vertical height is given you can convert in inclined distance if inclined distance is given you can convert in vertical height by sine theta applying sine theta cos theta if angle is given so this is the f now, what is the value of uh, location of pressure center? This YP equal to this one and this one. So, what you look carefully, this is gamma. Gamma equal to rho G. You know, fluid density, you get the, the gamma. A is vertical distance, A area, right? And right over here, I naught and Y bar. So, you need to figure out the CG of the structure and inertia respect to I naught. For example, if I say a vertical plate right over here is uh, not in a inclined position, even vertically, some marks, this is the free water surface. surface. So what will be the CG? Location of CG of the structure. I can say, for example, this is six feet and this is five. So, where is CG? This is six feet. Obviously, this will be at the middle, right? And this distance will be three. From here to here will be three. If you know the vertical distance, you can get the y bar. But then y bar will be this distance plus this distance. Area of the plate, 5 into 6. Then I naught, area along x axis will be 1 by 12 b. b will be 5, h will be 6, h cube. Okay? Easily you can figure out. So uh, let's see, we can solve a problem. Okay, other thing, this is yeah, engineering mechanics, uh, it's not engineering mechanics class, right? This is fluid mechanics class. I think engineering mechanics class, you already did this kind of stuff. 
like uh -huh. you have a uh, multiple area some portion is square then you have a rectangular portion then you might have a triangular hole right over here and you might have a axis over here now you figure out the location of cg figure out the moment of inertia you did this kinds of problem so if this type of plate is submerged in the bottom of water say you have a hole also over here how will you figure out the force so in that case we need to figure out the location of the all cg right also we need to figure out the moment of inertia of the wall body the whole plate so how we can do it so in that case you don't have to start like from the engineering mechanics but if i give you this type of problem i have to give you attached a formula sheet with the question for example so you can easily figure out the value of i naught location of the CG from the formula sheet. For example, if I give you a rectangular plate right over here, a rectangular plate, if I make a figure over here, bigger arm length is B right over here. It's calling B and height of the triangle is S. So you can figure out the area from the formula, half B S. Then <clears throat> this length is C. Then you can figure out the location of X C G from here along this direction, this C G right over here. X bar, if I magnify, this is x bar right over here x bar from this corner x bar x bar equal to b plus c divided by 3 and y bar equal to h by 3 what will be inertia right over here this is inertia so easily you can figure out similarly if a circular plate i give you this is the area and y c g x c g this is the formula inertia is this one okay similarly if i give you a area that is semi circle and remain under water so how will you figure out the uh, y c g First, so you let me draw a sketch. Say right over here, this is free surface, free surface, and under water, right over here, a half circle plate in the remain under water and vertical height of the top is given, top surface. Now, what will be the y distance, y, uh, y bar? Y bar will be distance of the CG. So say CG right over here. So your y bar will be distance from here to all the way right over here now how will you figure out the this distance that what is the location of the uh, cg so y bar if i say this is is vertical depth and this one if i say only y y cg that means 
coordinate of CG from the top surface. Then your Y bar in the formula that will be equal to H plus Y CG. You need to add this term. Just mention one thing, you need the distance of CG from the top surface. That is the main thing. Now, in the formula, you know, we need area. We need to know incline angle. We need to know I naught and we need to know Y bar. So area right over here. Now Y bar value, you see from the top uh, flat surface is Y. This is this one. So this Y C G actually this value, this value. And I naught, you get up from here. I naught equal to this much. So it's very easy. Uh, similarly, if I give you a elliptical surface, right over here is the formula, okay? Now, uh, so far, any question, anyone? No question? Hello? Okay, uh, we can uh, continue. So you see, it's this problem is saying a vertical trapezoidal gate with its upper edge located below the free surface of water is shown below. Determine the total pressure force and center of pressure on the gate. Now how we can figure out? But you see, in this problem, theta value is not given but it's saying one thing mentioned over here that is a vertical trapezoidal gate. So what does it mean? This one, your, our inner derivation, this one, our inclined surface, right? And right over here, there was free surface of the water and this angle was theta. So when this inclined surface become vertical, if theta value decreasing, that means it become like that. Your dam become more wider, right? But if theta value gradually increase, then how it is look like? then your dam will be narrow and increase more gradually this wall will be vertical if theta equal to 90 degree. So this plate, not the inclined surface, he remain at the vertical position. So that's why in this case, although theta is not given, but theta will be 90 degree. Now, what is our uh, formula. We need to use two formula. One is force, other one is location of center of pressure. So force formula is this one. In that case, gamma we know, 1000 kg per meter cube into 9.81 or gamma equal to rho g. Theta is 90 degree and sine 90 equal to one. So whose value you needed now? We need the Y bar or H bar. So what is the relationship between Y bar and H bar? You, you we show it that this is the triangle. This angle is theta. This is theta. So our, this is, y and vertical height is h so if i say this is y bar sine theta equal to h bar divided by y bar okay so if you know the y bar then you can figure out the force now how will figure out the y bar now in that case y bar and h bar is same now say cg 
around right over here is working. So your y bar will be the vertical distance from the cross surface to the location of the CG. So what is the vertical distance? You know, the, this mass is five, but this value we don't know, like this mass from here to here, right? If you know this distance, then we can figure out the y bar. y bar will be equal to five plus this distance. Now, uh, I will figure out the center of pressure, yp equal to i naught area of the plate into y bar plus y bar. So you see, uh, without calculating y bar, you cannot do anything. Y bar, I naught, and location of CG is very important. Now, how we can figure out the this Y bar? If you look in the formula sheet, that if a surface is trapezoidal, then what is the value of area? H into AB. H into AB, you look carefully, this is equal to H is the height, and A and B, length of the arm, bigger and smaller arm. Y bar, Y bar equal to this is the formula. And you look for me, Y bar there, this is Y bar. That means Y bar is the distance of CG from the bigger end, okay? And right over here, this is the I naught. Now, you have to be careful about choosing A and B. Remember, A is the, B is the bigger end length, A is the smaller end length. But if you think this is A, this is B, over here you are still okay. But over here, your result will be wrong, over here will be wrong. That means your problem has to be matched with this formula. So you have to be a little bit careful. Okay. So in that problem, okay. So this problem, we need to figure out the location of the CG by using formula. So let's see how we can solve it. Uh, at first, you will say given. What is given? A depth of the top surface is 5 meter. It's given over here. That is mentioned over here. Density of fluid, water, 1,000 kg meter cube. Then in the formula, A is the smaller length, A equal to one meter, you say <coughs> the geometry of the trapezoidal plate, smaller arm length, A equal to one meter, bigger arm length, B equal to three meter. Height of the plate is two meter. What you need to figure out, hydrostatic pressure force, and also you need to figure out location of center of Pressure. Now, at first, by using the formula, you figure out the area. You need area, you need I naught, you need to figure out Y bar. So, at first, you figure out area from the formula. This is the formula. Then, figure out the YCG. YCG means in the formula, this is not y bar, this is saying y cg. That means this is equal to only this distance. And which one is y bar? y bar is distance from here to here. So if you know this one, plus five will be y bar. So you figure out the y cg 0.83. That means this distance is 0.83 then I naught equal to this one. Then we have found I naught equal to 1.22 meter to the power four. 
and h bar equal to h depth plus this y c g that means this 5 meter plus 0.83 meter we are getting 5.83 okay now we need to figure out the center of pressure y p so right over here we just get the height right depth of uh, center of gravity y bar this is y bar or h bar same thing because over here uh, your angle is 90 so h bar equal to y bar sine theta so both are same i not you know now figure out the force this is the formula force equal to gamma sine theta area into y bar y bar value we already figured out y bar equal to we found h bar right if theta equal to 90 then this uh, this one is same so you just put it over here and we got 229 kilo newton force working in the plate now center of pressure this is the formula plus y bar y bar 5.83 i know we figure out with the formula we have the area of the plate and we have the y bar over here finally you got 5.88 so you see this is location of y cg and this is location of your center of pressure okay so you see center of pressure distance is higher that means always below the object so your center of pressure right over here now if you like to support this plate in the top and bottom which one has to be stronger bottom has to be stronger because your force resultant force is working through this point which is close to the bottom uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, so far, any question? Anyone? No. Okay. Uh, we can solve one more problem. Then we'll keep it off. Okay. So you see in the figure it's saying an inverted semicircular gate inverted mean upside down uh, your you can put this two way you can put flat surface at the top this way or you can put flat surface and even at the bottom in underwater so it's saying an inverted semicircular gate shown below is installed at angle 45 degree right over here with respect to the free surface this free surface so immediately this is theta top gate is six meter uh, top of the gate it's saying six meter below the water surface in vertical direction that means this direction is six meter so that means from here to here is six meter determine the hydrostatic force you have to figure out the f and you need to figure out the yp on the gate so if this one is cg this is yp so you need to figure out yp and how much this is force working remember force always work through center of pressure not through the cg okay so let's see how we can solve it it's very easy we need to take the formula from the uh, formula sheet and you see if we know the location of c is vertical this distance then your h bar 
एज बार विल बी दिस सिक्स प्लस दिस डिस्टेंस इफ डिस्टेंस इज वाई वन देन दिस विल बी सिक्स मीटर प्लस वाई वन देन यू अप्लाई साइन कॉस यू कैन फिगर आउट दिस वाई बार ओके सो लेट्स लेट्स सी वी कैन सॉल्व इट इजीली so right over here we have two formula just mention formula over here we need to use this one for this one same thing uh, and we need to figure out the yp from this uh, uh, hello you need to turn off your mic okay Unmute your mic. Okay, so this is YP. This is the formula. Now you write down over here. Given you see in the uh, problem, the radius of this plate is given. They say radius R equal to four meter theta forty five degree. And height of the water is given six meter. Density of water this mass. You need to figure out hydrostatic pressure force, F or P equal to how much, and also center of pressure. Now, at first you need to figure out the area. So how will uh, and this is the formula for Y. C Z, right? This is formula from I not. Now, now you don't need to memorize this formula. If is uh, it is very simple. Say if I say only rectangular type structure, then I might not give you the formula sheet. If area is circular, I'll not give you because it's easy to you need to figure you can figure out. But if his area is like that is complex, then uh, we'll give you this uh, formula sheet. So in that formula sheet, what is our area? Same circle, right over here. We need to use this one. So you see location of C Z from the flat S is given. Y bar is this mass. I not. You can use this formula. Area half pi r square. So you need to careful. In our case, uh, our is upside down. That means flat surface. Any man at the top. So if right over here is C Z. So we need to calculate. Have this distance. We need to calculate from here to here. And this distance will be this value. So you see, they are giving from the flat is not from the bottom. Okay. Okay. So we need to calculate all the parameter first. You figure out the area. This one area. Y C Z. Four R by three pi. What is R? Radius of the plate, four meter. You already got it. So you got one point seven three. What does it mean? That mean uh, this distance, this this one from here to here, this is one point seven. So what will be your H P? H P will be. I'm sorry. H bar. H bar will be distance from here to here. That means this six plus one point seven. So is H bar equal to H vertical height is six plus Y C Z. That means seven point seven meter. Then. <coughs> You need to figure out the I not, I not by this formula. You got the I not. 
then h bar you have now how we can get the y bar you see you figure out this is the location of cg so you already figure out this height this height equal to 7.7 .7. now how you can figure out the y bar from here in plane distance just you use the sine theta right so sine theta equal to h bar by y bar h bar you got vertical depth so y bar is coming 10.88 meter right over here now you have the wall data you already have it just you need to put there so let's see pressure force gamma y bar sin theta area area you already found sin theta you can y bar uh, into sin theta equal to h bar or you can keep it you can use the y bar the, the same thing so after reporting all the value this you are getting result this one okay and it's better if you put all the unit kg meter cube density rho g h bar g meter per second square then you can put uh, h bar your h bar is uh, meter area meter square then you see <coughs> this meter cube this uh, that mean he has a meter square this one and this meter will be take it out so you will have only kg meter second square kg meter second square so kg meter second square this equal to newton this equal to newton so you get newton then divided by the thousand you get kilo newton center of pressure using the formula so we are getting 10.98 so again you see your y bar is 10.88 by pressure center bottom of the y bar 10.98 so far uh, any question any question anyone no hello ji sir no question no sir okay uh, our time is almost over so we'll uh, leave it here and uh, if you have any question still you can uh, sir Sir, if you please you. provide us a lecture three and four, it will be better for our study. Yeah, we'll, well, I'll put it today. Okay. Uh, three okay, is already there, right?